Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the subject of today's video newsletter, well, today's, today's video is going to be titled Stop Wasting Your Data. Stop Wasting Your Data. Um, I'm in a client uh, currently, I could see I'm in a slightly different, um, slightly different location and we've just finished doing some work. Um, it's setup reduction work mostly. Um, and part of the setup team is taken up with doing, first off, constantly checking and then waiting. It can take, uh, the other day actually we did some work here and it took up to four hours to get the first off passed through the process. So I want to take a look at the data from the first off. And um, here is an example of the, the piece of paper that I'm interested in uh, looking at. It's very simple. Um, it's got the part number on it. It's got the works order number on it and the material, the batch of material that's being used. By the way, the process that we're looking at is a molding process. I'm going to tell you which company I'm, I'm at. It's a specialist molding process. It's not so much about dimensions. It's more about the material. They make a specialist material uh, in this company although this first off does contain some dimensional does contain some dimensional checks so I just want the data from the previous 30 uh, first offs and the reason I want the data very simply I want to be able to produce a process behavior chart a process behavior chart. Now you might know process behavior charts as SPC charts but a much better name for SPC charts is a process behavior chart. Now all I wanted was data from the last 30 setups and then what I would have done is plotted a graph from the dimensional checks that were done on that sheet. And all I was going to do, process behavior chart, just to keep it simple, a process behavior chart, really, what is it? Well, it's simply a run chart. Now, if I want to turn it into an SPC chart, of course, I'll put some limits on there and I'll do some calculations. But initially, process behavior, just put it on a graph, do the simplest thing, you know, Six Sigma is known for complex data analysis. Totally unnecessary. We just need to do the simplest thing with our data and all I want to do is a simple run chart so I can see the behavior. And of course, if the setter could see this chart, of course, if he got a data point up here, of course, that might make him think, maybe there's something wrong with the setup. If he gets a data point that's in line with the normal behavior, maybe it's a sign everything's okay and you can just set the process running. So these process behavior charts could save us a lot of time. But unfortunately, and this is why it's called stop wasting your data. Trying to get hold of the data, those sheets of paper that you just saw, is absolutely impossible. We just spent, I was here four days ago, I've left them to, to, to get the data while I was away. In four days, We've just got eight data points available to us. Eight data points. The data's on site, by the way, so it's not that the data's not here. It's just impossible to go and find. The data was stored, and the only reason it's stored is for traceability. It's not stored to be useful. It's not stored to be gold. All of this data is absolutely gold. It's cost fortunes to collect. It's wasted thousands of hours in setups. And yet, they're not using it because they only use it for traceability. And because they only use it for traceability, they store it by works order number. So I said, can we just get 30 setups, 30 sets of data? I'm like, oh, 
it's just quite difficult to do. The first thing we have to do is go to planning. And planning will tell us the works order number for the part that we're interested in, because it's a particular part that I'm interested in drawing the process behavior chart for. First thing, I have to, I have to go to planning. Planning, tell us all the works orders. Then you go to QA. What do QA do? QA sort through all their files by works order and then they have to print individual sheets. Individual first off records because each one of those sheets that you saw earlier contains one data point. So suddenly I've got to get 30 of these things and it's taking us forever. Look at what they're doing. This data should be at the point of activity, available to the setter. It is gold dust data because it's going to tell us the status of the process. It's going to tell us the behavior. But we don't allow the setter to have this data. Once he's collected a single data point, they take the data sheet off him, they scan it, and they save it on a computer, and he's not even allowed access to the files. Only QA are allowed access to the files. What a complete waste. If we could get the data, produce a process behavior chart, use the process behavior chart to tell us something about the first off, Maybe to tell us that the first off's okay because the process is behaving the way it always has done. We have gold here. It's, it's cost us money to collect. It's costing us money to store. And we can't use it. We absolutely can't use it. It's, it, it, it's impossible. Um, and yet, we could be saving thousands of pounds if it was easily available, easily accessible. I don't know why companies do this. By the way, the other thing they said to me when I started talking about changing what they do, they said, oh, we're not sure. ISO 9000 requires it. We've got this bureaucratic pressure just squeezing down on people's ability to make money. This thing should not be about bureaucracy stopping you from making money. This is a money-making enabler. If you're using ISO 9000 to, to push bureaucracy into your company, you're going to be doing this, you're going to be storing documents, not allowing access to documents because the ISO, the ISO rules say that you are not allowed. Come on folks, if you've got data, do a process behavior chart. And by the way, not complicated here, keep it simple and keep these things simple. Six Sigma potentially is very simple. We just want a simple process behavior chart. In other words, a simple run chart. What's it going to show us? Well, it's going to show us process behavior. It's going to show us the natural behavior. It's going to tell us the natural behavior of the process. So if we could get 30, 50 first offs, we could see the natural process behavior for this single part. And of course we could do for other parts, but it's so, so difficult to do. We're going to struggle to do this. But if we can see the natural process behavior, then of course we can see maybe when the process is demonstrating something which is unnatural. And when we can see unnatural process behavior, maybe that's telling us when the first off is not right. And therefore, without having to look too, too deeply at this, we, we immediately know the first off, which by the way, takes us about an hour to get the results back. Maybe we can see that just from a simple process behavior chart. So that's why I want to get this data. But this, this isn't unique to this company, by the way. Lots of my clients, they put data in the most inaccessible, unanalyzable places. Data is gold. Process behavior, run charts, they are gold sitting in the belly of your company. Think straight. Don't let ISO 9000 
blow you off course. You are trying to make more money. Get the gold out of your company. Get the data. Stop wasting it. Draw some process behavior charts. And then folks, in a very simple way, this costs nothing to do. You are going to make more money. Use your gold. Draw process behavior charts and make more money.